Okay, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kathleen. Uh, yeah. uh, Michelle, had, uh, Michelle works in employee health, and she normally does this portion for us. But I can jump in here. Okay, how about you stand by? You uh, do okay. That. <laughs> what are the restrictions on us once we're I'm taking care of this patient? What are the restrictions on us? Oh. Well, you will be monitored for the 21 days from whenever. Well, I think they're looking at having a place for you to sleep here. If you don't want to go home to your families. I think, you know, they're still working on that. So with one, you only work with one side and then you monitor the 21 days until the next time, you'd be out to see the general population? No, you, you, I, you, would, you would only be working with this patient. Okay, so good. Okay. Um, so as far as what happens after the patient is gone and how far you're worked up, it depends on what the state requires too, which they haven't been specific about, whether, you know, you can come back and work on other patients after that and just monitors or what. So it really mean, depends on what the stage is. Right. The law is in contact with the general population for coming and going, colleagues. You, there's going to be a dedicated E team to be part of that. If we do get an Ebola patient, that's the only patient you're going to be taking care of. You'll be in a rotation. You, you, no, not a separate entrance? We're going to be in contact with. You don't spread anything because you have symptoms. Correct. So we'll be taking your temperature twice a day and asking you for symptoms. The minute you have a fever or any of those symptoms, you are going to be brought in and isolated and so So I have a question. <laughs> okay. So when I, I couldn't hear what she was saying at all, but I was, I was, my question was, so once you are taking care, of, you're on the team, you have a patient, you're taking care of them, you are isolated as well as the patient in the hospital. You're not allowed to go back and forth to your home, have any contact with your family, or is it just once you've been exposed and have a fever that you're... There's, yeah. there's a couple of different scenarios. You're on the E-team, you're slated to take care of a patient. You will only do that patient. Your old schedule right. that you worked is gone for now. Correct. You're only on the E-team doing this rotation. So. And there's, there are various groups working on uh, the different aspects of this. There's an HR group that's developing the contract and how you're going to get paid and what is your schedule going to look like and all of that. And we don't have all those answers for you today. Um, but as far as how you'd be quarantined, it would be different depending on if you had a breach in your PPE, we could tell you what's going to happen. You're not leaving. Right. You're going to go be isolated. Yeah. Right. Um, but as Sherry said, unless you're showing symptoms, it's going to be a monitoring of a temperature twice a day. At this point, that is the guidance that we've been provided and that's what we would do. And again, that's through another group. That'll be employee health that's helping to monitor that whole process. So our focus here today, and we're happy to answer any questions, entertain any ideas that you have, uh, is just to show you the PPE right. that we've selected and help you learn how to get into it and out of it effectively. There are other groups working on um, how we're going to give them the medications, how we're going to feed them, so how we're going to do this. Will we be with those groups as well? Those are the things that are already being formed. developed. This is the part that's the most risky for you. Okay. Think of it this way. Okay, hi, you're going to be taking care of them. Here's the plastic tray or the paper tray. They're going to take the food in. Here you go. So it's not necessarily that you're going to have an in-depth training on how to take the tray in or deal with it, but we can certainly address any of those questions. There will be uh, disposable utensils. Those are not coming back out of the room. There will be a paper mar, for instance, that will be a duplicate, but only for the people who are in the room to understand and see what has already been given. There will actually still be charting going on out, outside that room. Um, so there are different aspects of it that are not as in-depth and, and hands-on-ish, if you will. It's a more of a, hey, this is how we're going to do this. Um, but certainly we can get to all of those questions as we go through today, because we're going to be here together for a while. We'll be all, we'll all be friends at the end. <laughs> I think we're friends now. I do, we too. We just want to be, be safe ourselves. We no, I want well, you to be safe. You know, that is, this power, so that is our primary you know directive. This group has been um, uh, you know, tasked with the tour of finding the proper PPE and making sure that everyone here understands how to put it on and take it off safely. Everybody here knows how to do, take care of a patient. We work from clean to dirty. We keep our hands clean with the alcohol foam. Ebola is not going to do the alcohol foam. For you guys, our, our, um, our goal is to keep you as safe as possible. So that's what our task is here today. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Just remember, this is fluid. It changes from day to day to day as they find out more. So um, if you check the uh, Ebola icon on Pulse, it'll take you to our um, interim guidance. So I don't know if you've looked at that, but that's Can what the whole down? team has been working on. If you go to Pulse, you have to scroll down. It's not in the first view as you open it. You have to, Ebola is down. You can access it here. You can't access it from home. So 
right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a problem too. It actually just takes you to a link to CDC, so you can ex right. access that from yeah. anywhere. Yeah, the guidance. And it's pretty easy to find on the CDC website, the guidance for um, Ebola. So um, every, I know we've had people coming in a little bit late. Does everybody have all the handouts, all the tattoo exams, the checkoff sheets? And the, the most important one for this portion is the medical questionnaire. Um, we have to have that back from everyone, and we'll have to review it before we put anyone in a, in a capper, papper. Um, and it just asks about your health history and basically if you're claustrophobic and have different issues. Because when we put this on you and then we're going to put a shroud over top of you, we want to make sure we know what you are health-wise um, so that you're not automatically rejected as far as wearing this uh, piece of equipment. Exactly. Does everybody have theirs? And we'll, we'll pick those up before we, we don adopt this for you uh, first and then later we will have you guys in them. So we just need to collect those before we get to that part of it. Kathleen, yes, ma'am. When you have reoccurring training sessions, say like a month or something like that, mm -hmm. we're going to have to figure out the frequency because no matter the size of the E team that we put together, we're going to have to make sure that you guys feel competent again going forward. You know, we've, this is the first round. We've done four big sessions, and um, we'll have to figure out the frequency of, hey, have you remember this? When this is how you put it on, how to take it off. Right. And if there's any guidance changes, we'll have to incorporate that into the the team. And also, if um, for any reason we're not able to resupply with any of the PPE that we currently have in the process, we'll have to retrain as well. So it's an ongoing process. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, because it's fluid. And, and uh, like <laughs> Kathleen said, our task is strictly your safety to show you how to, to use the equipment we've got, how to get it on, and how to get it off. Uh, there are several other pieces out there that we we don't have all the information from, like HR, the food, patient flow, or, or even, for that matter, how you're going to care for that patient in, inside there. Uh, that'll, that'll come from uh, guidance from other people, and uh, so just stay yeah. tuned. And, that, uh, and that'll depend a lot on the patient, the yeah. how they present. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All righty. Uh, let me see. We need to talk about how you put this on. Anybody in this room ever worn this piece of <laughs> equipment before? Excellent. <laughs> You're looking really good back there. <laughs> That's actually very comfortable. Uh, it, it really is. It's kind of like a bicycle helmet. And I don't know if any of you remember some of the other big pappers that we've worn in the past, the double shroud with the big hose that comes and attaches to the uh, engine at the back with all the filters on it. This is it. The filter is inside of this helmet. Um, so let me walk you through this. Papper capper just means it's contained. And what we've done here, and you'll see it all together in the end, uh, why we put these pieces together like we have. This is um, HEPA filtration to 99.97%. Yep. <coughs> Remember that number? Um, device. All right, let's go to the next one. And because it's got the HEPA filtration and um, the shroud we're going to use with it, it's going to help protect against droplet and any droplet and airborne uh, transmission risks. Now, Ebola is not airborne. However, you did hear Sherry say that it can be aerosolized. It is a droplet contact and standard precaution bug. But if you do something like a bronchoscopy or an intubation, you can aerosolize those um, viruses into the air in a droplet format. They are heavier than air, so they will eventually land on a surface. And that goes back to how we're going to try to maintain the cleanliness inside that room and reduce the viral load. Next slide. Thank you, ma'am. That's a lot of words. Yes, this is just information for you to have so that you can feel comfortable that this equipment is going to keep you safe. It talks about OSHA standards and then all of the um, uh, protective uh, information that you might want to know if you want to know a little bit more about the device. Okay. It comes with nine different pieces. We're only going to use certain ones of them. Uh, number eight in the bottom center is the belt. We're not going to use that. You don't have to worry about number nine, which is the charger. We're going to do that for you. Uh, basically, you're going to look. You're going to have the battery and the helmet which has the cord attached and that's all you need to worry about. This piece in here, number four, top, top middle, that's actually the filter, it's underneath here. Don't worry about it. We don't want anybody that's going to be wearing this going in the room having to worry about how to change this out. Okay, so these are just the pieces that you're going to be familiar with. Okay, 